Okay, let's do the introduction now. That contains how to build an LFS system, what's new since the last release, change log, resources, and help. Next, how to build an LFS system. The LFS system will be built by using an already installed Linux distribution, such as Debian, Open Mandriva, Fedora, or OpenSUSE. We are using Ubuntu here. This existing Linux system, the host, will be used as a starting point to provide necessary programs including a compiler, linker, and shell to build the new system. Select the development option during the distribution installation to be able to access these tools. Oh. As an alternative to installing a separate distribution onto your machine, you may wish to use a live CD from a commercial distribution. Chapter 2 of this book describes how to create a new Linux native partition and file system. Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't know um, if there's a specific Ubuntu with tools in it. For the, as an alternative to installing a separate distribution, you may wish to use a live CD. Chapter 2 describes... Uh, how to create a new Linux native partition and file system. This is placed where the new LFS system will be compiled and installed. Chapter 3 explains which packages and patches need to be downloaded to build an LFS system and how to store them on the new file system. Chapter 4 discusses the setup of an appropriate working environment. Please read Chapter 4 carefully as it explains several important issues you need to be aware of before beginning to work your way through Chapter 5 and beyond. Chapter 5 explains the installation of the initial tool chain, Binutils, GCC, and glibc. So the initial tool chain, Binutils, GCC, and glibc using cross-compilation techniques to isolate the new tools from the host system. Okay, that'll be interesting. Chapter 6 shows you how to cross-compile basic utilities using the just-built cross toolchain. Chapter 7 then enters a chroot environment and uses the previously built tools to build the additional tools needed to build and test the final system. This effort to isolate the new system from the host distribution may seem excessive. A full technical explanation as to why this is done is provided in Toolchain Technical Notes. In Chapter 8, the full LFS system is built. Another advantage provided by the chroot or chroot environment is that it allows you to continue using the host system while LFS is being built. While waiting for package compilations to complete, you can continue using your computer as normal. To finish the installation, the basic system configuration is set up in Chapter 9, and the kernel and bootloader are set up in Chapter 10. Chapter 11 contains information on continuing the LFS experience beyond this book. After the steps in this book have been implemented, the computer will be ready to reboot into the new LFS system. This is the process in a nutshell. Detailed information on each step is discussed in the following chapters and package descriptions. 
Items that may seem complicated will be clarified, and everything will fall into place as you embark on the LFS adventure. What's new since the last release? In this version of LFS, there has been a major reorganization of the book using techniques that avoid changing the host system and provides a more straightforward build process. Oh, very interesting. Below is a list of package updates made since the previous release of the book. Upgraded to Automake 1.16.5, Bash 5.16, BC 5.2.2, Bind Utils 2.38, Bison 3.8.2, Core Utils 9.0, E2FS Sprogs 1.46.5, UDEV 3.2.11, XPAT 2.4.6, File 5.41, Find Utils 4.9.0, Gawk 5.1.1, GDBM 1.23, glibc 2.35, gzip 1.11, iana etc 20220207, inet utils 2.2, ip route 2 5.16.0, libcap 2.63, libelf 0 0.186 from elf utils. Lib Pipeline 1.5.6, Linux 5.16.9, uh, you know, Elves and Dwarves must have been D&D &D players. Lib Pipeline 1.5.5, Linux 5.16.9, MANDB 2.10.1, Mason 0.61.1, and Curses 6.3. OpenSSL 3.0.1, Python 3.10.2, Readline 8.12, Shadow 4.11.1, SysVinit 3.01, TCL 8.6.12, TC Data 2021E, Util Linux 2.37.4, Vim. 8.2.4383, ZSTD 1.5.2. Added, Bind Utils 2.38, IDO Fix 1 Patch. Core Utils 9.0, Change Mod Fix 1 Patch. File 5.40, Upstream Fixes Dash 1 Patch. Shadow 4.10, User Ab Segfault Dash 1 Patch. SysVinit. 3.01 consolidated dash one point patch and looks like nothing was removed. Okay, so that is chapter one, section two, what's new since the last released. Okay, 1.3 change log. In the, this is version 11.1 1 of the Linux from scratch book. Dated March 1st, 2022. That's 25 days ago from when I'm reading this. If this book is more than six months old, a newer and better version is probably already available. To find out, uh, please check one of the mirrors. Linux from scratch mirrors HTML. So let's bookmark the mirrors on the LFS folder. Below is a list of changes made since the previous release of the book. Change log entries. Uh, 2022 March 1, B-dubs, LFS 11.1 .1 released. February 23rd. Uh, I don't think I need to read all the... Um, well, on February 10th, XRY111, let 
work around the issue causing binaries to link to libraries from the host distro for pass to bind utils. It's now unnecessary to build Zlib, Zlib in chapter six. Um, remove said from glibc, that's February 4th, Thomas. Um, remove said from glibc instructions in chapter eight, it has been applied upstream. Uh, they updated to Linux 5.16.4 on January 29th. Uh, is that the most recent version of Linux? We'll, we'll check the version later. Do we need to really look at all this? <clears throat> Okay, let's go to next section. That's my T in the background. All right, uh, 1.4 resources. 1.4.1 facts. If during the building of the LFS system you encounter any errors, have any questions, or think there is a typo in the book, please start by consulting the frequently asked questions. Facts that is located um, here. So let's bookmark that in the LFS folder. Mailing lists. The LinuxFromScratch.org server hosts a number of mailing lists used for the development of the LFS project. These lists include the main development and support lists, among others. If the fact does not solve the problem you are having, the next step would be to search the mailing list uh, at this address, which I will bookmark. For information on the different lists, how to subscribe, arch archive locations, and additional information visit uh, the mail page. IRC, several members of the LFS community offer assistance on Internet Relay Chat, IRC. Before using this support, please make sure that your question is not already answered in the LFS facts or the mailing list archives. You can find the IRC network at IRC Libera chat. The support channel is named hash LFS dash support. So you go to the facts first, then you check the mailing list, then uh, you can try the IRC if you're stuck. The LFS project has a number of worldwide mirrors to make accessing the website and downloading the required packages more convenient. Please visit the LFS website at Mirrors for a list of current mirrors. Please direct all your questions and comments to one of the LFS mailing lists. See above. Okay. 1.5. Help. If an issue or a question is encountered while working through this book, please check the facts page. That was said to be the first place to go, right? Um, which we, at uh, Linux from scratch, general facts. Uh, I don't think I bookmarked that, okay. Questions are often already answered there. If your question is not answered on this page, try to find the source of the problem. The following hint will give you some guidance for troubleshooting. Cool, it has a hints page. We also have a wonderful LFS community that is willing to offer assistance through the mailing list and IRC. See the previous section I just read resources. However, 
Uh, that's 1.4 resources. However, we get several support questions every day, and many of them can be easily answered by going to the facts and by searching the mailing list first. So hence, go to the facts and search the mailing list first. So for us to offer the best assistance possible, you need to do some research on your own first. That allows us to focus on the more unusual support needs. If your searches do not pro produce a solution, please include all relevant information mentioned below in your request for help. Okay, 1.5.1, things to mention. Ready? Apart from a brief explanation of the problem being experienced, the essential things to include in any request for help are the version of the book being used. In this case, it's 11.1. .1. The host distribution and version being used to create LFS. Uh, so that would be a little complicated as mine is a long-term support Ubuntu, but I installed the Ubuntu Studio low latency kernel. The output from the host system requirements script the package or section the problem was encountered in, the exact error message or symptom being received. Note, whether you have deviated from the book at all. Note, deviating from this book does not mean that we will not help you. After all, LFS is about personal preference. Being upfront about any changes to the established procedure helps us evaluate and determine possible causes of your problem. 1.5.2, configure script problems. If something goes wrong while running the configure script, review the config.log file. This file may contain errors encountered during configure which were not printed to the screen. Include the relevant lines if you need to ask for help. 1.5.3 Compilation Problems Both the screen output and the contents of various files are useful in determining the cause of compilation problems. The screen output from the configure script and the make run can be helpful. It is not necessary to include the entire output, but do include enough of the relevant information. Below is an example of the type of information to include from the screen output from Make. So let's see, GCC. All right, in this case, many people would just include the bottom section, Make 2, star uh, asterisk 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 make error one this is not enough information to properly diagnose the problem because it only notes that something went wrong not what went wrong the entire section as in the example above is what should be saved because it includes the command that was executed and the associated error messages an excellent article about asking for help on the internet is available online. Read and follow the hints in this document to increase the likelihood of getting the help you need. So let's bookmark this. We'll put it in the LFS section general done there mm. okay this looks like a pretty long document here I wonder what the license on this is maybe I'll read it sometime Mm. 
All right, I don't want to waste too much time on this page. Oh, copyright right here. Last revised in 2014. Okay, but I mean, how to ask questions, that's kind of a timeless skill, right? All right, uh, section two, preparing for the build. So we just, chapter one, the introduction, so we can stop here. Oh, wrong thing to pause.